This is the seven-seater Hyundai Santa Fe plug-in hybrid version of the car. 55,000 euros, the price tag, and it comes very well specced. In fact, if you want to spend another 5,000 euro, I'm not sure why you should, you'll get things like a glass sunroof, but there's still tons of safety tech on board, like blind spot and decent camera systems. And if you like 360 camera systems, then again, you'll have to jump to that 60,000 euro vehicle. It's quite a bit cheaper than the diesel version as well, blame VRT and things like that. And the plug-in range on it will do around about 45 kilometers on pure electric alone. Sitting on 19 inch alloy wheels, if you like big grills, then you're in the right place because that is a massive grill, even bigger than the current new model Tucson. It is an entirely new model, by the way. It's underpinned with the same platform as the Kia Sorento but Hyundai only subtly tweaked the outside of the car when they revised the whole new model. Now in the boot, it's not quite 600 liters with the third row down, but I think that is kind of all you need. I had this car away uh, in a hotel at the weekend, all the bags, I didn't need the extra row of seats, uh, was very easy to deliver. with. just threw everything in and closed the boot and don't worry about it. Somewhere for your cables is a little, bag in here so you get your type 2 and your granny your granny cable that is but you're gonna to have to live with these in the boot if you want to bring the type 2 cable around with you at all times and then under here is where your extra row of seats are tucked away and this boot mat which is very nice does kind of get in the way as you can see but if you need the extra row it's here and available for a reasonable size kids and adults if the journey isn't too long. Middle row passengers get adjustable seats to give you extra leg room should you need it for the, the third row passengers. There's two USB charging ports here. Even with two child seats here on the bench, you'll still get a small-ish adult in the middle and there's a flat floor, which again, just gives them better places to put their feet. If you were to spec that extra 5,000 euro option, this roof would be flooded with light from the glass roof, but the bright white, very soft of the touch material actually lends itself to creating a, a bright area enough space. And you'll be keeping that 5,000 euro for a rainy day or a family holiday instead. It's about 100 quid under 65,000 euro for the diesel version, if you are still considering that one, by the way. Only thing I'd really change is make this screen a bit more integrated and a bit bigger because compared to the Sorento where it sweeps into the driver's instrument display, might feel a little bit small for what you're expecting to get. However, one thing that's very handy is Hyundai have included physical buttons for absolutely everything. If you're someone who doesn't like operating climate control on screens or terrain mode of which there's many like sport and snow and mud and sand, everything is covered. Your media setup, your climate control, your air cooled and heated seats, all a standard wireless charging, all operated very, very conveniently by a whole host of buttons. If you like buttons, you're gonna love the inside of the Santa Fe. And the materials are very premium, very soft. I put it up there easily with the likes of Mazda in terms of attention to detail, quality, probably Lexus as well, to be fair. It's really, really well put together and there's just so much space for everything you would need as a parent of three or four kids. God help you. We have a combined output with the battery and the 1.6 petrol engine of 260 brake horsepower, which is actually all right. We're all wheel drive. I know people always want to know if you used all the battery, what fuel consumption would the car do? Somewhere between six and eight liters per 100 kilometers if you're just using the petrol engine and the price of petrol these days, I understand people wanting to know. I get it. Um, it is a, a nice car to cruise on. I've done a good bit of driving this weekend because we were away and it wafts along things like the M50. Sometimes it feels, I don't know if unsettled is the word, but it kind of just buffers a little bit over services that aren't fully perfect. And it's not, it's not harsh or anything. It just, you just feel the car shifting around. I don't try to 
you know, work out the best way to describe it to you. It's it's ever so subtle, but it's it's there. And I'm not sure if it's um, as as if the passengers would be as aware of it, or it's just more of a driver thing because you can feel what's going on with the steering wheel. Well insulated from the outside world, you really don't hear an awful lot of what's going on, and your safety aids that come as standard on the PHEV version with blind spot. I'll never get tired of that. And while it's a big enough bus, by Irish standards anyway, I find it fairly okay to manoeuvre. Now, it's not to say it's not long or whatever, so if you are trying to get into a parking space, it's not gonna be like parking a super mini, but I think the driving aids all help to make it as, as easy as, as it's possible for such a large car. Under a load, it does sound a little bit noisy, but to be honest with you, from driving it extensively this week, it's rare that you find yourself doing that because there's enough low down torque. If you have a charge, you can obviously drive in full EV mode. One thing I haven't been able to figure out how to do, and I've, I've messed around with enough that I'm confident you just can't, you don't seem to be able to charge the car using the petrol engine, which kind of makes sense in, in a weird way because what's the point in being green and then using more petrol to charge a battery. You will get some charging from regen braking, however. I haven't seen it put any substantial range into the battery from regen. If cruising is your thing though, and you just want a car that will graciously travel you and your family around in style, does actually feel pretty premium in fairness to Hyundai. It's, uh, it really does, like the quality of the leather, the materials that you're, you're touching on every time, it's all really well put together. And I could see why, for example, someone might drop from maybe a Lexus or something like this and still feel very much at home. And I think you have to probably get to the Santa Fe and the Hyundai range to have that feeling, but this car delivers it in buckets. All wheel drive also gives you a nice cushion for grip in lovely Irish wet weather. So again, it's another bonus of, of being in this car that doesn't necessarily drink juice because of it. You'll be able to do well under two liters for 100 kilometers in this car if you keep your battery topped up, but generally in eco mode, um, 6.2 liters per 100 kilometers, very, very achievable. And it seems to be, dare I say it, easier on juice than the Sorrento. Which, by the way, I've reviewed twice on the channel, including the, uh, the hybrid and the diesel version. So the seven-seater market is pretty crowded at the moment. You've got offerings from Peugeot, you've got more premium offerings from Hyundai and the new Kia Sorrento, if that's the car you want to check out. Essentially, it is the same car underneath. You just need to figure out which do you prefer? Are there some subtle differences? Is there more of a premium feel to this version of it? At 55,000 euro, it is a lot of money, but it's not crazy money compared to whatever else is out on the market that will do the same job. The question is, will they feel it's premium, especially on the inside, and arguably to be fair on the outside as well, because it's, it's a good looking bus and the chrome and the gray and the wheels, it does look like something that's quite premium. Anyway, if you're looking for a seven-seater and you've got the extra quid, I definitely shortlist it. Any comments or questions you have, leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you on the next one.